what's going on YouTube? Um, we've got to talk today about pigment density. Um, I've had this question brought up to me a bunch of times in my Facebook forums and uh, it is very important that you understand the densities if you really are delving deep into doing acrylic pores. Uh, if you're just doing it just to have a small hobby or whatever then maybe this doesn't concern you and you want to just do what you want to do then that's fine. But if you really want to have an understanding of uh, your acrylic pores and, and how to manipulate that paint in order to get what you envision in your head to actually come out on the canvas, which is very difficult if you don't understand the concepts that uh, I'm going to lay out here today. All right, hold on a second. I have a little bit of water. Uh, okay, so pigment density. What is that? Pigment density is, is the specific gravity that you can see up here um, a, versus a cup of water versus a cup of, cup of paint. Now, the cup of water is going to weigh one, um, like say, uh, 150 grams. Okay, we're going to have 150 grams of water here, and then over here we're going to have 150 grams of paint. The paint is obviously going to weigh more than the water is. That difference that's right there, that's your specific gravity, your relative gravity that, that is pulling down on it more. Okay, And every paint has a different uh, pigment and different pigments weigh differently. Okay, um, Golden is nice enough to print out a, or a, to have a chart for us and I printed this out here. And you know what we would do like with your uh, Shelly Blooms, um, the titanium white is, is real big. Uh, that's got a 3.9 uh, weight on the pigment. And then um, the highest that's on this paper is the iridescent stainless steel, which is 7.2. It's almost double the weight of the uh, titanium white. So there's, there's so many more. So you got your titanium white is right here. There are so many more colors that are beyond titanium white that will work for your Shelly Blooms and things like that. Now, the reason why these work like this is if you see up here, okay, I've got like Mars Black. Mars Black is very heavy. Um, it's going to be the heaviest out of these three. The, the Phthalo Blue is a little bit lighter, so it's going to sit on top of it when you put it into a cup like this. And the Crimson is, is lighter than that, so it's going to sit on top of that blue. Okay? Now, when you put it like this and you pour it in your cup like this for a flip cup or a straight pour, it's going to stay just like this. All right. When you take your canvas and you put it on top of that cup and you flip it over, now this Mars Black is on top. This Mars Black is going to go up through two layers of paint. Okay. This blue is going to go through one layer of paint coming up. Not all of it, but some of it's going to come up and it's going to grab a hold of the paint that's surrounding it and that's what gives you cells. Um, without silicone, without any other additive, this will give you cells right here. Okay. Now this crimson being the lightest, when you turn it upside down, it's going to want to go the opposite direction and come downwards. Uh, same thing with this blue. This blue is going to want to come, uh, or the, excuse me, that was going to come all the way through. So you see what I'm saying though, basically. These two are going to arise, this one's going to come through. And it's the mixture that's going up. If you want to think of it kind of like a lava lamp, you remember those old lava lamps, the way that it would, when it heats up, it would rise, and then when it cooled down, it would start to sink back down, and then it would just a constant circle like that. All right? Now, if you don't have one of these uh, pigment density charts that are right here, um, this one, like I said, this one was from Golden. I did also print one off from Liquitex, so I have this one here as well. But if you don't have those, you don't have a printer, you don't know, you know exactly what the uh, pigment densities are in the different uh, paints and whatnot. The, basically what it is, is, all the paints that you are getting in a certain brand, let's, let's use Golden for instance, in those tubes. If you have three different kinds of colors, you got these three colors right here, okay, all of them are going to have the exact same thing. Two thirds of that container is binders that holds that paint together. Pigment is one third of that. So this part is not what we're weighing because that's going to be the same in all three different containers. You see what I'm saying? The pigment is the difference, and that's what causes your pigment density, your different fluctuations in your paint. Okay, so that's where that comes in. 
Now, if you don't have one of these papers, like I said, you don't have a printer, and you want to get going and you want to uh, figure the, the, the densities out in your paint, here's what you can do. Like if you look up here, I pour, uh, this is obviously a um, marker, but let's just pretend. Uh, I pour black down first, okay? Then I pour blue down on top of that, this, this phalo blue goes right down on top of it. Now it's lighter, so it's not going to sink in that paint. It's going to sit right on top. That crimson is lighter than that, so it's going to sit right on top of that blue, and it's not going to sink. Now if I switch it around and I put the red down first, and then I put the blue down, the blue is going to start to sink down inside that. You'll still see a little bit of blue on top, but it's mixing underneath. Okay. Then I put that black down on the top, and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to cut right through that blue and right through the red and go down towards the bottom. So this way right here, you mix up all of your paints, and then you pour little dots, and then you put your, your next color paint right on top of it, and your next color paint right on top of that, and you watch and see which paints will stay on top and which paints sink down to the bottom. You'll get a much smaller diameter of paint on the top of it if it's sinking through, and you can see it. You can see it happening. It's slow, but you can see it. Okay? So that's how we manipulate our cups when we do our pours. Uh, is w when we stack them, you want to make sure that your uh, pigment densities are heavier on the bottom and you work your way up if you want a lot of cells. If you don't, you're going to switch it around. But you're still going to get a little bit of cells because when you put the heavy stuff on top, it's still going to want to sink through. So that's how we manipulate it, like I said, to manipulate the paint to get the cells that, that we're looking for. Now, is that everything? No, it's not. When you're talking about pigment density, that's one part of it. Paint consistency is the other part because you can have a very fluidy um, mix of one color and a thicker mix of a different color, and the thicker is not going to sink through, or excuse me, the thin's not going to th sink through the thick. I can't talk as easily. So you want to make sure that you that you have all of your colors consistent. And I show this right here, paint consistency. Now this is what we call a drip test, okay? And each one of these are numbered one, two, and three. This is for your thickest, your thin, thin, and then your thinnest uh, consistency of paints. And what you do is you're going to put a drip on a piece of paper, okay? And then you're going to put one drip of each color that you're using, and then you're going to tip it up on its end so that that paint can start to drip down and you and you watch it and as long as all of your paints match if they're all in the number ones for thick if they're all in the number twos for thin and if they're all in number threes for um, for the thinnest then your uh, flow in your paintings is going to work out a heck of a lot better so you got to make sure that you're consistent with your your mixes all right and all paints are mixed with the same recipe from your base, from the base coat that you put down before you put any colors on it, to all of them, they're all mixed in the same consistency. For a beginner, you can, once you get a lot more used to uh, doing these pours, you can manipulate your recipe how you see fit. But for a beginner, um, even for a beginner intermediate, I would suggest using the same um, recipe for all of them. Um, and I have another video that will show you uh, exactly how I mixed a lot of my um, paints and things like that. Okay. With that being said, though, a lot of people ask, how much paint do I need? Okay, well, I went ahead and I printed off one of these, and this shows you basically what you're going to need, how many ounces that you will need for each size painting. Now, generally what I will do is I will do one ounce of mixed paint for every 16 square inches. How do you get square inches? That is side times side. So if you've got an 8 by 10 canvas, you're going to say 8 by 10 is 80. And 8 by 10 by 80, and you're going to divide that by 16. So that's going to give you your ounces of paint that you need, which is 5. So you're going to need 5 ounces of paint to do that 8 by 10 painting. Now according to some of these larger uh, canvases that are on this paper here that it shows, it's actually less than what I like to use. I always try to maintain this for a one ounce of mixed paint for every 16 square inches, okay? And the reason being is because if I waste a little bit more paint, I want to make sure that I have enough coverage to cover the entire canvas and the sides. It's that simple for me. So I add a little bit more to that. 
Okay. And also, when you're pouring into your cup for your flip cup or your straight pours, if you're pouring in from the side, I know that this is just a <laughs> rough drawing, I'm sorry about that, but if you're pouring in the side of your cup, it's going to load into that cup different than if you pour straight in the middle, or even if you swirl it around in here, okay, on the, when you're mixing your paint and you're pouring in your cup, okay, it's all going to mix differently. If you pour it in the side, it's not going to sink as fast. If you pour it straight into the paint, it might sink faster. So you can manipulate it like that. Okay? And with your, um, your paint consistency like this, this is um, your stir stick here. As your paint comes down and it gives you a little bit of a mound in the paint and then immediately goes back into your uh, main paint here as you're pouring it in. Just a little bit of a mound, that's your proper consistency. So pay attention to that. Um, I would suggest getting a scale for new um, painters. That way you're always very consistent. Measure everything out until you get a little better hang of this um, and a little better feel. Um, you know, some of the people that have been doing this for a while can do it by sight. And sometimes if I'm doing a large painting, I still will get the scale and make sure that I've got everything to proper consistency, but I usually do it by sight by myself. So, all right, so that is your uh, density for these colors. So if you really want to dive deep into acrylic pouring art, you really want to know how do I do this? How do I do that? Think of your pigments. Think of what is going to be heavier, what's going to sink in your paint, what's going to float in your paint, and that right there will make a, or break a painting. I'll tell you right now. It's, you have a vision in your head, you say, I think this is just going to work here. And you pour it out and it doesn't turn out anything like what you thought in your head. Well, you've got to get down to the very scientific basics of paint in order to understand how to properly manipulate this paint in the way that you really, really want to. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this is informative. And uh, again, if you guys have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button um, and then like this video. Um, that way, you know, each and every one of us can uh, benefit from it in the future. And that's how they do their logarithms when you guys like the videos. So, all right. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, pour on.